at all of her the things she's been to see in the last two weeks. Good morning, Kate. Good morning. I'm just hunting for a microphone. Apologies about that. Oh, sorry. I'm here. I sneaked I, in. You, you did sneak in. It's been quite the day today. So tell us, Kate, I'll, I'll hand it over to you and you can regale us with all the things going on. I will, of course. I'll st- I've got three to talk about today, two of which were part of the Rising Festival. And um, the first one is a kids show, which I, I can't find in any other location anywhere um outside of the art centre where it was for just, you know, a week or so. So I'm sorry I can't give you more dates because it's finished there. It's co-written by Tasmanian playwright Nathan Maynard, um, who's an Indigenous Australian and um, New Zealand or Maori writer, uh, Jamie McCaskill. Uh, it's a, a kids show, as I said, directed by Isaac Drandick. It's a tale of friendship and cultural connection between uh, an, an Indigenous girl uh, called Niara and her friend Tay, who's a boy of Maori descent who has very little knowledge of his Maori culture or his language. So they rescue, it's about a Tasmanian tiger, that's the purpose of it, this rather gorgeous Tasmanian tiger uh, character known as Tiggs, played by Glory Tui Daniel. And I think for me, that was the most enthralling part of the performance this gentle, graceful, lyrical movement. She's clearly a dancer. Um, of Tui Daniel as Tiggs, costumed in a dog's head with a stripy back and a large bouncing tail. Tiggs was, I think, a favourite with the children as well. So they want to rescue Tiggs, um, save her from the hunters that pursue her, and they build a canoe that's half Maori and half Indigenous Australian and paddle her across. They meet spirits and um, all sorts of um, various characters, and uh, the kids squeal at delight every time one of them says poo um, and roar at the Maori wind god sort of fart jokes. So it's classic, sort of, it's a bit like... Um, Oh, I think one of those things that kids laugh at. They're sort of five to ten-year-olds, I think, were most of the audience. Uh, so it's a cross-cultural uh, performance, which is apparently a first, um, and for, for theatre in general, for children's shows. But um, that was the the really interesting and an educa- educative piece of theatre, as well as entertaining and fun and vivid and colourful, beautiful projections. Uh, so I'm sorry that's not on anymore. Can't give you any more deets about that. But I want to get on to two other shows. One I saw just last night, so I've you know, dashed off ideas for that one. This first one, also, also from Rising, is called Masterclass, uh, performed by Fidlim Cannon, who's an Irish, an Irish actor from Broken Talkers, a company in Ireland, and Adrian Truscott, who is a feminist performer, I suppose you'd call her, often, um, uh, often a solo. Uh, it's... A really clever, cunning two-hand that's, I think, an inspiring merging of hilarious hilarity and satire and parody. And But it's also got a clear-eyed, often punishing commentary on gender politics in performance. I know that sounds sort of strange and dull and politically sort of, you know, smug, but it works really well. So uh, Cannon plays an interviewer of a great male artist who is played by... Adrian Truscott. So it's a man she's playing. So the character's gender has shifted. The, it is very silly and funny because the um, canon as the interviewer is histrionically leaping about. He's obviously a fanboy for this um, great male artist who is essentially Hemingway-esque, they call him, which means he's self-important, abusive and a misogynist. And he's accused, the, the interviewer says, I, you're um, accused of or criticised for violence against women in your plays or stories. No, no, it's not violence against women. It's violence against female characters. Now, if that happened just, you know, Occasionally, that wouldn't be a problem, but apparently it's everything. This is a you know a, f- a, a fictional character, of course. So that broad comedy of that initial interview gives way. It's you know amateurish wigs and mad costumes, etc. Yeah, makes way um, for a disturbingly real reenactment of this um, writer's and di- director's aggressive rehearsal techniques during which Truscott, as the great artist, the man, throttles Cannon, who's playing the interviewer, who is in turn playing the female actor. And it becomes shocking and menacing and and real. But because it's a woman playing this dreadful man, we're somehow better equipped to view and discuss and analyse that issue of male violence you know, rather than, you know, the specific event. I want to before we, you know, I know we're tight for time because it's been busy today. Last night I saw Underneath Mazarcha, 
with two stalwarts of um, Melbourne, well, Australian theatre and screen, Louise Siverson and Peter Horton, who have written this piece. Um, Ms Archer, she's called Kelly Archer, um, she has allegedly, so after she alleges, allegedly slapped a recalcitrant passenger on a long-haul flight, this Australian flight attendant, Kelly Archer, takes refuge in her late mother's London flat to escape the social media trolls and the paparazzi hounds who are pursuing her brutally and relentlessly and, of course, often anonymously. So she's grumbling and growling around the house and um, about the unfairness when, weirdly, a medieval knight appears out of the couch. No kidding. It's completely bonkers. And uh, I can't explain it any other way, but it's bonkers in a good way. It's really very fun. He's, you know, covered in blood and dirt and stinking of 800-year-old sweat and grime and in his chain mail and etc. discovers the shower, thinks it's hell. Um, it's it's very funny. And if old, um, impenetrable old English ain't your thing, um it's fine because his language shifts into English, um, comprehensible English, you know, at some point not far into the piece. This knight errant is, you know, goes from howling, raging and confusion till the two of them find common ground, shared history, shared issues, um, dealing with cowardice and how they should face the problems that they've created for themselves. He has to go back to the past. That's a bit of a quick whip around this thing. It's going to come back again. They, they want to um, bring it into a new production. Thanks, Kate. Such a quick go yeah, today. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. you um, you've been listening to Arts Weekly. It's been a crazy show today. There's been so much going on. Uh, end of program heads up. We've got the Williamstown Little Theatre. It's presenting a delicious English farce, Continental Quilt by Joan Greening, directed by Les Hart and starring Kay Morton. Season is 28th of June to the 15th of July. Uh, next week, we've got a guest from Bell Shakespeare, new production of Romeo and Juliet. Andrew Dixon will talk to us about the historic mansion Villa Alba. And Nick Holt Tolhurst interviews Morn Kransky about the Kransky Sisters shows at the Melbourne Cabaret Festival. And if you still call now, 9416 1035, 9416 1035, we've still got some double tickets for the Puppet Theatre Festival. My name's Philip Edwards. Thanks for your company today. You've been listening to Arts Weekly on 3MBS. On your radio, on your phone, and streaming to your smart speaker. This is 3MBS Melbourne. Good morning and welcome to Music in Melbourne. I'm Jess Karaskal, I heard, coming to you from Abbotsford on this Bit of a chilly morning. It really is winter now. We've got lots of treats on the show for you today. Later, I'm going to be chatting to Australian jazz legend Bob Sedegreen about his performance tomorrow night at Monsalvat. And we'll also hear about NZ Trio's performance of some new work at Tempo Rubato tomorrow afternoon as well. So make sure you stick around for that. But first on the program today, a live performance by pianist Joe Kindamo. He's going to be improvising on a song by Belinda Louie and Angie Coffey called Dream, which is from a children's fantasy series called Rapunzel's Sister, which is created by Belinda. I'll be chatting with Belinda and Joe a bit later, but let's cross now to the Lady Marigold Southie Performance 